Good morning. Good to have you all here this morning with lovely sunshine before it possibly gets colder again. We'll hold out hope it doesn't get as cold as they say it will. It's been nice to actually have some spring weather. Announcements, uh, this day is our kid, not kids fest, uh, backyard ministry. And we're gonna be packing some eggs with that as well. So if you want to help put some Easter eggs together to put with those bags after church, we do have some extra work to do that isn't heavy lifting. You just sit at a table and put candy and eggs. So if you can stay a few minutes after church to help with that, we'd appreciate it. And we'll be delivering all that this afternoon. Beyond that, uh, session is I believe next week, actually, because we pushed it back one week so that we, we wouldn't be on Mother's Day. So just as a reminder, session is ahead of time. So if you remember a session, next Sunday is when we're meeting for that. But I believe that's actually all our announcements. We've been through our Easter week and all our extra services, so we are on an off week, as it were. Uh, nothing extraordinary is happening to this week except for our backyard ministry, which happens at the end of the month. Are there any other announcements this morning, though? Yes, Lois. I'd just like to pass on, after we had sent a card to Janora, she called me one day after that, and she was so excited to have gotten that card and appreciate it here. And her voice sounded strong. She sounded good. I was glad about that. We were glad to hear from her. Yeah, I know she's still not doing well, though, so we'll yeah. keep her in our prayers, especially the past few days. So <laughs> Definitely keep Yes. Hoagie sales on Friday. Anybody need last minute hoagies? Oh, it's a women's club hoagie time. Yes. It's true. That's April season. So if you haven't gotten an order for that, make sure you get one. It's always delicious. Especially you online. All those orders. You order as well. All right. I believe that's all I see. So let us join our hearts together in worship by coming to God in prayer. Lord, I thank you for this morning, for the sunshine coming through as we begin our celebration of Easter and what it means for our lives. I pray that this worship would be glorifying to you, that we would leave inspired, knowing that you are a king that we worship, a king who is true in our lives. We ask these things in your name. Amen. Would you please stand and sing with me our first hymn, Crown Him with Many Crowns, number 264. and minds to our time of prayer, we do so knowing that we follow a gracious king, a loving king, who pours his grace out upon us and has died for us. Would you please join me in the prayer of confession found in your order of worship. Christ our King, forgive us for letting the power of Easter slip away. We turn to false hopes of the world 
forgetting the truth of your kingdom. Remind us that we serve a real king. May your spirit change our lives to be a people who serve and proclaim your love. Amen. Beloved, the grace of God has been given to you, and you're held in the assured power of Christ our Lord and Savior, in whose name you are forgiven. Would you please stand and join me in our affirmation of faith, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits in the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. We come to our time of prayer. We'll pray for those in our community who we know on our prayer list. We'll pray for Denora's health. Dip. But are there any other particular requests this morning beyond that? Yes. Donna. Any other? Well, we're glad that Bonnie is feeling better, too, so. Yeah, thank you. Seeing none, let us join together in prayer. Gracious and holy Lord, we gather today to worship your name, the one who is worthy of worship, the king of creation, the ruler of all things, the one who is truly in control, the one who has the right to be called our king of this world, the one who created us, looks after us, shepherds us, and one day will bring us home. You will right the wrongs that we see. You will bring justice upon those who abuse justice. You are a Lord of all time and space, in every corner, in every moment. You are the one who sees. You are the one who shows grace. You are the one who will judge. You are the one who died for us and rose again from us to show us a way to be that doesn't rely on adversity. It doesn't put power over others, but chooses to love. So Lord, give us eyes to see a world as you see it, and desire to work to build your kingdom come as we pray week after week. Help us be a people that does it. Help your church be a people that is a kingdom of heaven. Here on earth now, in all corners of this world, we pray that your spirit would bring a change in our hearts to lift our hands, to give us energy, to be a people of God, and not a people of this world. We pray that we would change our cities, change our governments, change our rulers to be fitting of your name. That there would be an end to the wars that we see and the strife of conquering. That there would be a people that actually help each other. Those that are hungry, those that have been abused through the systems we've created that let others flourish. We pray that you give us faith and discernment to be your disciples, to bring a change to the world, to proclaim your truth into places of conflict, of evil, and destruction. We pray that no voice would be left unheard, no person forgotten, that we proclaim you King of kings and Lord of lords, and mean it in our lives, to not seek after vain politicians or human ways, but your ways, ways of love, peace, ways of grace, Lifting up the lowly, being there for the lost, helping the homeless, the drug addicted, and the widows, breaking the chains of oppression, loosing the prison doors, proclaiming all people free and glorious and loved in your name. Lord, we pray that our community would reflect these truths here in Elizabeth, that this church would overflow with your blessings on our families, our friends, and our neighbors, but on the strangers and the outcasts and the shut-ins, to those that we do not see, to those that worship in other church buildings, but to those who also do not even know your name this day, who struggle along in the dark, who have no one to turn to, no one to trust. 
May the truth ring out on this day as we celebrate the truth of Easter, the truth that you are a king who rose from the dead for each and every one of us. We know that your care and love extends to each person. Where there may be sorrow, sickness, or suffering, send your spirit to bring healing, to bring a change. We pray for Janora that your healing hand would be upon her to take away these headaches. We pray for Donna Biddle that you would be with her to give her strength and breath each day. We pray for the many names on our prayer list. We pray for the people we trust and hold dear, that you would be with them. And into this moment of silence, we lift up to you those things that weigh upon our hearts, that distract us and weigh us down. Lord, all these things we pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We turn now in serving the God who comes to us by giving him what he gave to us to share. Would you join me in our morning offering? The Bible said my king is the king of the Jews. He's the king of Israel. He's the king of righteousness. He's the king of the ages. He's the king of heaven. He's the king of glory. He's the king of kings. And he's the Lord of lords. That's my king. I wonder, do you know him? My king is a sovereign king. No means of measure can define his limitless love. He's enduringly strong. He's entirely sincere. He's eternally steadfast. He's immortally graceful. He's imperially powerful. He's impartially merciful. Do you know him? He's the greatest phenomenon that has ever crossed the horizon of this world. He's God's son. He's a sinner's savior. He's the centerpiece of civilization. He's unparalleled. He's unprecedented. He is the loftiest idea in literature. He's the highest personality in philosophy. He's the fundamental doctrine of true theology. He's the only one qualified to be an all-sufficient savior. I wonder if you know him today. He supplies strength for the weak. He's available for the tempted and the tried. He sympathizes and he saves. He strengthens and sustains. He guards and he guides. He heals the sick. He cleans the lepers. He forgives sinners. He discharges debtors. He delivers the captive. He defends the feeble. He blesses the young. He serves the unfortunate. He regards the age. He rewards the diligent and he beautifies the meek. I wonder if you know him. He's the key to knowledge. He's the wellspring of wisdom. He's the doorway of deliverance. He's the pathway of peace. He's the roadway of righteousness. He's the highway of holiness. He's the gateway of glory. Do you know him? Well, his light is matchless. His goodness is limitless. His mercy is everlasting. His love never changes. His word is enough. His grace is sufficient. His reign is righteous. And his yoke is easy. And his burden is light. I wish I could describe him to you. Yes, he's indescribable. He's incomprehensible. He's invincible. He's irresistible. You can't get him out of your mind. You can't, you can't get him off of your hand. You can't outlive him, and you can't live without him. Well, the Pharisees couldn't stand him, but they found out they couldn't stop him. Pilate couldn't find any fault in him. Herod couldn't kill him. Death couldn't handle him, and the grave couldn't hold him. 
Thanksgiving. Pray not the doxology. Holy Spirit, blessings, offerings to build your kingdom in the world today. Amen. And join me in singing our second hymn this day. Rejoice, the Lord is King. Our first scripture reading comes from Psalm, it's Psalm 118, verses 14 through 29. Lord is my strength and my defense, he has become my salvation. Shouts of joy and victory resound in the tents of the righteous. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. I will not die but live and will proclaim what the Lord has done. The Lord has chastened me severely, but he has not given me over to death. Open for me the gates of the righteous. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous may enter. I will give you thanks for you answered me. You have become my salvation. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this and it is marvelous in our eyes. The Lord has done it this very day. Let us rejoice today and be glad. Lord, save us. Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord we bless you. The Lord is God, and he has made his light shine on us. With bows in hand, join in the festal procession up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will praise you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. And our New Testament reading is from Revelation. Chapter 1, verses 4 through 8. John, to the seven churches in the province of Asia, grace and peace to him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, 
the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth, to him who loves us and has freed us from our sin by his blood, and has made us to be a kingdom and priests, to serve his God and Father, to him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And all the peoples on the earth will mourn because of him, so shall it be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come. The Almighty. This is the word of the Lord for us this day. In the darkness we were waiting without hope without light till from heaven you came running there was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets to a virgin came the word from the throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one. God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of kings. To reveal the kingdom coming and to reconcile the lost. To redeem the whole creation, you did not despise the cross. For even in your suffering, you saw to the other side. Knowing this was our salvation, Jesus for our sake you died. Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one, God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of kings. you rose all of heaven held its breath till that stone was moved for good for the tomb had conquered death and the lamb rose from their tombs and the angel stood in awe for the souls of all who'd come to the father are restored and the church of christ was born then the Spirit lit the flame. Now this gospel truth of old shall not kneel, shall not faint. By his blood and in his name, in his freedom I am free. For the love of Jesus Christ who has resurrected me. of kings.
Would you pray with me? Lord, may the meditations of our hearts and the words I speak this day be glorifying to you. I pray that your spirit will come upon us to lift us into the throne room of your presence, to hear your voice clearly in our lives, to leave inspired this day to follow you. I ask these things in your holy name. Amen. Well, Easter has come. Last week we celebrated what is possibly the most important holy day in the whole gambit of the Christian calendar. But, as I've been here a while now, and I've tried to remind every year, Easter is a season. It's not just one Sunday. It's actually the time from Easter, which you celebrate. But then it's a season of celebrating all the way until Pentecost, which is at the beginning of June. So we have like six weeks of partying, people, and we need to get celebrating. Because Easter changes everything. And that's what we're going to be reflecting on in these coming weeks. It's going to be a series on how Easter reveals to us truth, reveals to us what it means to be a Christian, reveals to us how we are called to live in the world, how it is we're to have hope in tribulations, how it is we're to conquer fears when they overcome us, how it is that we can be steadfast in faith when it seems the world is growing ever more faithless. It's how it reveals to us these things. And these are words that are meant to permeate from all times and all places. So from the beginnings of the church, when the disciples saw Jesus and that truth was revealed to them, to the beginnings in Acts, all the way through how the early church was persecuted, in similar ways the people lived as we do today. And at the end of the New Testament, is a letter written to those people that are under oppression, those people who are persecuted for their faith, who do not see a way out, who thought Jesus is coming soon and yet he has not come yet, who thought his kingdom's going to be established in just the next few years, but went on to see the temple in Jerusalem destroyed. And this is the scenario in which John writes to. These are where the people in the book of Revelation, the ones he's writing to are situated, struggling, wondering where their next meal might come from, wondering where they'll be, how they can have faith, what they can hope in, what they can trust. And so for us, these next few weeks, we are going to reflect on Easter truths revealed through the lens of Revelation. Now, Revelation is a very important book. And it's a book full of a lot of imagery. But we're going to only be focusing on a few key chapters of it. And from those, see what it is we can learn to live in our lives. As we struggle. As we wonder, where is the church going? We thought we were headed to success. We were Christendom incarnate. The church had grown and grown. Everyone went to church on Sunday morning. And now it's backtracking, as some people might wonder. The same scenario in some ways as the early church. It grew and it grew, and then all of a sudden it was getting crushed. All of a sudden it was hard to be a Christian, persecuted, killed. How are we to go on? The same thing that we see in our lives as we struggle and wonder what it is that Easter means for us in our lives. And so we find ourselves here at the beginning of Revelation with this wonderful introduction by John, who just says it's from him, John. He has very little to say about himself because he has a lot to say about Jesus. He has a lot to say about this one that we say we follow. And so today we are going to look at what it means to be a king. If you haven't figured that out yet, you've been asleep because this whole service has been talking about that a lot. We watched a wonderful video that proclaimed on end the wonderful truths of who this ruler is, of how Jesus is different than any other king. And then Jim sang another wonderful song that reveals to us who this is that's come to us. And you might think, well, what more can Pastor Ben say? Hopefully a teeny bit more. But it's all the same truths. We Follow a king that is different than the ones of this world. 
when we look for hope in our lives, the masses in general, when people struggle, they turn to politicians. They turn to those who are in charge to try to fix things, to save them. Here and there, we've gotten it somewhat right. But more often than not, throughout the course of history, we've gotten it wrong. And most of the time, when people think of those who are in charge, they think of those who abuse their power, who are greedy with the wealth they get, who just seek their own ends, or help those who've helped them, those who have lobbying powers. It's all run by corporations, and the common man's voice doesn't matter. Politicians kind of get a bad rap. Some of it deserves, some of it not. But there's also our own people that we put in authority in our lives, those that we put up on pedestals and seek to help us. The problem is, none of them are really the king. All of them fall short. And then we wonder who's there to save us. We wonder, where can my strength be? What hope do I have? Easter. We forget it so often. The day that Christ shoved that stone aside and walked out was the day we won. That day, so long ago, won it all. Death is conquered. Christ is risen. He is ascended. The truth he declared throughout his ministry of loving those who are loved, unlovable, of being there for those who are diseased, of being with those who are faithless, those who are rejected, those who are oppressed, breaking the chains. He has said it will be done. Easter declares into our present lives and into the future an indisputable truth that he won, that he is the king, not just king in the ways we conceive, a king of real power, a power that doesn't have to oppress, a power that doesn't hurt, a power that instead lifts up. A power that changes your lives, my lives, creation itself. A king of kings. That no matter what the rulers do in our lives, no matter how our governments might get it wrong, in the end, they will be judged by the one who's above them. That there will be a trial at the end of days when all the people before him stand. And all the kingdoms of the world come before him. It's what John writes here. He is coming with clouds. Every eye is going to see him, even those who pierced him, those who were in power. And all the people on earth will mourn because of him. Shall, shall it be? Why? Because he is the true judge. Because we will see ourselves for what we are. The people will realize how fallen we are, how we haven't hit the mark. And more than likely, those who are in places of authority are going to be much more afraid than the common man because they've abused what he's given them. Christ is king of kings, and he has given those who rule over us the opportunity to use it well. Our politicians, our kings, our governors throughout time have been given the opportunity to use that to build God's kingdom. But they don't, and they fail. Most of the time, they have no idea what they're doing, except maybe their own ends. And if you wonder, in the end, who's going to judge those people? God. The real king, the one that gave them the authority in the first place, even if they didn't realize he'd given it to them. A king who will say, did you love the least of these? A king who will say, did you die for your people? A king who will say, did you raise up the lost? Be there with the sick. Go to the homeless. Lift up the persecuted. A king who says, I walked the streets of my country and went to each person. What did you do? What kingdom were you building? Because I called for a kingdom of hope, of love, of strength. I'm a king who loves. A God who has Easter power to change the world. That death cannot win. That's our king. It's a king that changes everything. But there's an important part of this passage 
and I want to leave off of this. Who are you in that kingdom? Because our king is great. I want you to be inspired today. I want you to know that you have a glorious Savior, one who can change everything, one that can give you hope in the darkness, give you love when you can't love, give you strength when your strength runs out. But to do what? To build God's kingdom. See, right here in the heart of this passage, when John's talking to these people and declaring all these beautiful truths of who God is, he turns to them and he says, and has made us to be, <coughs> excuse me, pollen, and has made us to be a kingdom and priest to serve his God and Father. That's the turn. We're called to be an inspired people. Christians are called to be God's kingdom. Are we doing that? Are we living as though we actually follow Jesus as king? Or are we living as though we follow the world as our king? That's the question. And unfortunately, more often than not, Christians look the exact same as everybody else. Church people while we might go on Sunday mornings, pray here and there, look the exact same as everybody else. Christian politicians do politics the same way as everybody else. Unfortunately, for so long, we have not been kingdom building, we've been world building. People complain that, oh, so long ago, the church was great, we were heading to a good trajectory in Western societies. Everyone was going to church, and everyone did that on Sunday mornings, and it was all great and dandy. But I would argue that more likely than not, people may have gone to church, they weren't Christian, because society was not increasing in God's ways. It had appearances, it had facades, but if that was the case, we would have continued in a trajectory that built up God's kingdom, that was there for the lost, there for the sick, there for the wounded, and there wouldn't be a, quote, decline. No, more than likely, people just stopped pretending because society said you didn't have to bother anymore. People stopped caring because society gave them what they, quote, needed. Today, we have to be better. We're not called to just come on Sunday mornings. We're called to be his kingdom and his priests because we serve a king who challenges the authority of this world. We serve a king who said, I'm going to be with the sick. He left a glorious throne and went into a grave. Do we do the same? Do we live our lives as though we're building God's plan or our plan? Do we serve God's ends or your ends? Do we hope in the midst of darkness or grow frail and afraid when adversity rears its head? We should be conquerors. You have a king who stands with you. Whether you're young or you're old, you can do anything. God is with you. You can save the lost. You can go to the hungry. You can change the world because Christ won. It's not a false promise. It's not an absence of strength. It's real truth. As the preacher said, do you know him? If you did, your life would change. If you did, there's a hope for you. And every day is a chance to remember who it is that you serve. Every day is a chance to remember that the tomb is empty, that Easter is real, to celebrate on the streets, to go to your friends and say, I live, I'm going to live forever. I have a hope that this world can't squash, a light that it can't quench. I no longer thirst, I no longer hungry. I have all that I need because my king is a real king. He came, he saw, he helped, and he will come again. And everything's going to change on that day. 
No more tears. No more pain. No more sorrow. So let me join you in your sorrow. Let me be with you when you are hungry, so that way you might know my King. That's what it means to be a Christian in Easter, to celebrate so hard, to embrace Jesus and this truth so deeply that we can't help seek out the problems in this world and change them. And if we do that, we will be the priests of God. We will be the kingdom of God. And that horrible things that we all hear on the news would be a little bit less tomorrow. We're not going to solve all the problems. We can't. We can't fix it. But we can make it better. We can bring hope to the hopeless and tell them about the one who will fix it, who already has fixed it, and can give us strength today. Do you know him? His name's Jesus. And he's the King of Kings. Would you pray with me today? Lord, I thank you for the truth of this day. I thank you that we can celebrate and not be sorrowful. That we don't sit on the side of a tomb with you dead in it, but on this side of Easter. A truth that permeates all time and places. A truth that gives us strength today and tomorrow. Of who our King is. A suffering servant. A loving one. Full of grace and mercy and strength and power. You are the Alpha and the Omega, Lord. Help our lives declare this truth. We ask these things in your holy name. Amen. Would you please stand and sing with me our final hymn, He Leadeth Me, number 330. Go this week, a changed people, a celebrating people. Declare to your friends and your neighbors that your Savior lives, that you have a King of kings in your life.
Go. The power of God the Father, the love of Jesus Christ, and the grace of the Holy Spirit, now and forevermore. Amen.